A crozier, also known as a crozier, paterisa, pastoral staff, or bishop's staff, is a stylized staff carried by high-ranking Roman Catholic, Eastern Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Anglican, and some Lutheran, United Methodist, and Pentecostal prelates. Other typical insignia of many of these prelates are the mitre, the pectoral cross, and the episcopal ring. A crozier staff is a part of the tradition of Jewish Christianity. History The origin of the crozier as a staff of authority is uncertain, but there were many secular and religious precedents in the ancient world. One example is the lituus, the traditional staff of the ancient Roman augurs, as well as the staff of Moses in the Hebrew Bible. Many other types of the staff of office were found in later periods, some continuing to the modern day in ceremonial contexts. In the Western Church the usual form has been a shepherd's crook, curved at the top to enable animals to be hooked. This relates to the many metaphorical references to bishops as the shepherds of their flock of Christians, following the metaphor of Christ as the Good Shepherd. The Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Rite Catholic crozier is found in two common forms. One is tau-shaped, with curved arms, surmounted by a small cross. The other has a top comprising a pair of sculptured serpents or dragons curled back to face each other, with a small cross between them. The symbolism in the latter case is of the bronze serpent made by Moses as related in Numbers chapter 21 verses 8 to 9. It is also reminiscent of the caduceus of Hermes or the rod of the ancient Greek god Asclepius, whose worship was centered around the Aegean, including Asia Minor, indicating the role of the bishop as healer of spiritual diseases. Topic. Staff of Moses Topic. The Staff of Moses is first mentioned in the book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 2, when God appears to Moses in the burning bush. God asks what Moses has in his hand, and Moses answers, A staff. A rod. In the KJV version. The staff is miraculously transformed into a snake and then back into a staff. The staff is thereafter referred to as the rod of God, or staff of God, depending on the translation. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. The Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go, return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Moses and Aaron appear before the Pharaoh, when Aaron's rod is transformed into a serpent. The Pharaoh's sorcerers are also able to transform their own rods into serpents, but Aaron's swallows them. Aaron S rod is again used to turn the Nile blood red. It is used several times on God's command to initiate the plagues of Egypt. During the Exodus, Moses stretches out his hand with the staff to part the Red Sea. While in the wilderness, after leaving Egypt, Moses does not follow God's command to speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Instead he strikes the rock with the rod to create a spring for the Israelites from which to drink. Because Moses did not sanctify God before them but said, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Thus, Moses failed by honoring himself and not God. For not doing what God commanded, God punished Moses by not letting him enter into the promised land. Numbers chapter 20 verses 10 to 12. Finally, Moses uses the staff in the battle at Rephidim between the Israelites and the Amalekites. When he holds up the rod of God, the Israelites prevail. When he drops it, their enemies gain the upper hand. Aaron and Hur help him to keep the staff raised until victory is achieved. Topic. Official use Topic. The crozier is the symbol of the governing office of a bishop or apostle. Topic. Western Christianity Topic. In Western Christianity, the crozier known as the pastoral staff, from the Latin pastor, shepherd is shaped like a shepherd's crook. A bishop or church head bears this staff as 
shepherd of the flock of God, particularly the community under his canonical jurisdiction, but any bishop, whether or not assigned to a functional diocese, may also use a crozier when conferring sacraments and presiding at liturgies. The Roman Catholic Carimonial Episcoporum says that, as a sign of his pastoral function, a bishop uses a crozier within his territory, but any bishop celebrating the liturgy solemnly with the consent of the local bishop may also use it. It adds that, when several bishops join in a single celebration, only the one presiding uses a crozier. A bishop usually holds his crozier with his left hand, leaving his right hand free to bestow blessings. The Carimonial Episcoporum states that the bishop holds the crozier with the open side of the crook forward, or towards the people. It also states that a bishop usually holds the crozier during a procession and when listening to the reading of the gospel, giving a homily, accepting vows, solemn promises or a profession of faith, and when blessing people, unless he must lay his hands on them. When the bishop is not holding the crozier, it is put in the care of an altar server, known as the crozier bearer who may wear around his shoulders a shawl-like veil called a vimpa, so as to hold the crozier without touching it with his bare hands. Another altar server, likewise wearing a vimpa, holds the mitre when the bishop is not wearing it. In the Anglican tradition, the crozier may be carried by someone else walking before the bishop in a procession. The crozier is conferred upon a bishop during his ordination to the episcopacy. It is also presented to an abbot at his blessing, an ancient custom symbolizing his shepherding of the monastic community. Although there is no provision for the presentation of a crozier in the liturgy associated with the blessing of an abbess, by long-standing custom an abbess may bear one when leading her community of nuns. The traditional explanation of the crozier's form is that, as a shepherd's staff, it includes a hook at one end to pull back to the flock any straying sheep, a pointed finial at the other tip to goad the reluctant and the lazy, and a rod in between as a strong support. The crozier is used in ecclesiastical heraldry to represent pastoral authority in the coats of arms of cardinals, bishops, abbots and abbesses. It was suppressed in most personal arms in the Catholic Church in 1969, and is since found on arms of abbots and abbesses, diocesan coats of arms and other corporate arms. In the Church of God in Christ, incorporated, the largest Pentecostal Christian church in the United States, the presiding bishop bears a crozier as a sign of his role as positional and functional leader of the church. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Papal usage. Topic: <inaudible> Popes carried a crozier at times in the first centuries of the church. This practice was phased out and disappeared by the time of Pope Innocent III in the 13th century. In the Middle Ages, much as bishops carried a crozier, popes carried a cross with three bars, one more than the two bars found on croziers carried before archbishops in processions. This was also phased out. Pope Paul VI introduced the modern papal pastoral staff, the papal ferula, in 1965. He and his successors have carried a few versions of this staff, but never a quar. Topic: Eastern Christianity. Topic. In Eastern Christianity Oriental Orthodoxy, Eastern Orthodoxy and Eastern Catholicism, bishops use a similar pastoral staff. When a bishop is consecrated, the crozier Greek, Paterisa, Slavonic, Pasak, is presented to him by the chief consecrator following the dismissal at the Divine Liturgy. The Archbishop of Cyprus has the unique privilege of carrying a Paterisa shaped like an imperial scepter. This is one of the three privileges granted to the Orthodox Church of Cyprus by Emperor Zeno the other two being to sign his name in cinnabar, i.e., ink-colored vermilion by the addition of the mineral cinnabar, and to wear purple instead of black cassocks under his vestments. An Eastern Archimandrite high-ranking abbot, hegumen abbot or hegumenia abbess who leads a monastic community also bears a crozier. It is conferred on them by the bishop during the divine liturgy for the elevation of the candidate. When he is not vested for worship, a bishop, archimandrite or abbot uses a staff of office topped with a silver pommel. Oriental Orthodoxy In the Oriental Orthodox churches, croziers are used as pastoral staffs held by bishops. The Armenian Apostolic Church uses both Eastern and Western style croziers, while the Syriac Orthodox Church and Indian Orthodox Church have croziers that are thicker than their Eastern counterparts. 
clerics of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church and the Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church use crosiers that look exactly like the Greek ones. In the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, croziers are sometimes somewhat longer and are always decorated with a blood-red cloth around the top cross and the serpents. This symbolizes the bishop's responsibility for the blood of his flock. Topic. Description Topic. Croziers are often made or decorated in precious metals, or are at least gilded or silver-plated. They may also be made of wood, though this is more common of the crozier carried by an abbot than of a bishop. Topic. Western croziers Topic. Croziers used by Western bishops have curved or hooked tops, similar in appearance to staves traditionally used by shepherds, hence they are also known as crooks. In some languages there is only one term referring to this form, such as the German Krumstab or Dutch Krumstaff. The crook itself i.e. the curved top portion may be formed as a simple shepherd's crook, terminating in a floral pattern, reminiscent of the Aaron's rod, or in a serpent. S head. It may encircle a depiction of the bishop's coat of arms or the figure of a saint. In some very ornate croziers, the place where the staff meets the crook may be designed to represent a church. In previous times, a cloth of linen or richer material, called the sedarium, literally, sweat cloth, was suspended from the crozier at the place where the bishop would grasp it. This was originally a practical application which prevented the bishop's hand from sweating and discoloring or being discolored by the metal. The invention of stainless steel in the late 19th century and its subsequent incorporation in material used for croziers rendered moot its original purpose it became more elaborate and ceremonial in function over time. In heraldry, the sedarium is often still depicted when croziers occur on coats of arms. In the Roman Catholic Church, the crozier is always carried by the bishop with the crook turned away from himself, that is to say, facing toward the persons or objects he is facing, regardless of whether he is the ordinary or not. The Sacred Congregation of Rites on 26 November 1919, stated in a reply to the following question, in case an outside bishop uses a bishop's staff, this being either required by the function or permitted by the ordinary, in what direction should he hold the upper part, or crook? Reply. Always with the crook turned away from himself, that is toward the persons or objects which he is facing, AAS 12-177. Eastern croziers The croziers carried by Eastern bishops, archimandrites, abbots and abbesses differ in design from the Western crozier. The eastern crozier is shaped more like a crutch than a shepherd's staff. The sedarium or crozier mantle is still used in the eastern churches, where it is usually made of a rich fabric such as brocade or velvet, and is usually embroidered with a cross or other religious symbol, trimmed with galoon around the edges and fringed at the bottom. The sedarium is normally a rectangular piece of fabric with a string sewn into the upper edge which is used to tie the sedarium to the crozier and which can be drawn together to form pleats. As the sedarium has grown more elaborate, bishops no longer hold it between their hand and the crozier, but place their hand under it as they grasp the crozier, so that it is visible. The eastern crozier is found in two common forms. The older form is tau-shaped, with arms curving down, surmounted by a small cross. The other has a top composed of a pair of sculptured serpents or dragons with their heads curled back to face each other, with a small cross between them, representing the bishop's diligence in guarding his flock. Topic symbolism topic The traditional explanation for the form of Western croziers, beyond the obvious reference to the bishop as a shepherd to his flock, is this, the pointed ferral at the base symbolizes the obligation of the prelate to goad the spiritually lazy, the crook at the top, his obligation to draw back those who stray from the faith, and the staff itself, his obligation to stand as a firm support for the faithful. It is considered to be both a rod and a staff Psalm chapter 23 verse 4, a rod for punishing the recalcitrant, and a staff for leading the faithful. Topic image gallery topic topic See also topic Crozier surname topic Notes topic topic References topic Morris Rowe, Patrick 1908. Crozier. In Herbermann, Charles. Catholic Encyclopedia, 4. New York, Robert Appleton Company. 
Crozier, Miriam Webster Online Dictionary, Springfield, MA, Miriam Webster, Inc., 2005 Noonan, James Charles Jr., 1996, The Church Visible, The Ceremonial Life and Protocol of the Roman Catholic Church, New York, Viking, p. 191, ISBN 0 670 86745 4, The Reichenau Crozier. Metalwork. Victoria and Albert Museum. Archived from the original on 28 November 2009. Retrieved the 22nd of September 2007. Topic external links. Topic photo of Pope John Paul II kneeling before the holy door of Saint Peter's Basilica, carrying a form of the papal ferula with a three-barred papal cross. Photos of medieval croziers from Italy, France, Spain, and England. Photos of the new crozier of Pope Benedict XVI.